Hi Ultimate Gardeners, welcome back to the Ultimate Gardening channel. My name is Emmanuel Arce, why well not to be the Ultimate Gardener? Come join me in becoming an Ultimate Gardener day by day. In today's exciting spreading video I'm gonna be discussing with you guys on how to start your very own herb garden at your own garden so let's go ahead and jump right into the tips on what you should do when you're beginning your herb garden so number one is you want to go ahead and locate an area that is very easy for you to access I know that's something that a lot of gardeners tend to say but use or locate an area that is very accessible to you because an herb garden is usually a garden that is nearest to the kitchen because that's where you're able to get all your ingredients from your garden easily without any hassle and you'll be able to go inside and cook your home meals with your organic herbs from the garden so choose a location that is accessible to you number two is that the location has to have full sun all herbs that I know of that are the basics like basil, rosemary, sage, thyme, everything like in that topic loves full sun. An herb garden should receive about five to six plus hours of direct sunlight in order to thrive. You could adjust those depending on your zone or your growing climate. If you're in a more colder climate, I would recommend giving them more sun. If you're more humid, tropical area like me, you can go ahead and give them a little bit less time of sun. It totally depends on what growing zone you are. So I will put it as if you're in zones eight and below, put them in six to seven plus hours of direct sunlight. If you're in zones nine and above, you can go ahead and put them in five to six plus hours of direct sunlight. But make sure the location receives at least five hours of direct sunlight. Number three is that the location you're planning to put your herb garden has to be easy to water. Herbs are very high maintenance, I would have to say, because not like any other plant, they do not like to get dried out very much often. So you want to make sure their soil is constantly moist but while draining and that they're able to access some water or moisture from some type of way. Doesn't matter if you use drip irrigation, if you use a sprinkler system like I do or you do hand watering, they just need some type of water supply to draw in from because they do not like to get dried out as often like any other plant in your garden. So make sure the location is very easy to water. Number four is to stay vigilant. When it comes to herbs, a lot of pests tend to come after it. For example, here in South Florida, a lot of pests we deal with is scale and whitefly. Usually on our woodier type plants, for example, like our rosemary gets it a lot, our thyme gets it a lot, our mint gets it a lot, as well as our sage. So you want to stay vigilant of any pest that comes to your herb garden because you want to stay vigilant and stay on a constant spraying schedule if you want to go organic i know there's solutions out there in the internet for you guys to use but i use all organic neem oil that's what i use and it works very well for me but when it, when you spray make sure it's not during the hottest times of the days as well as there's not going to be rain for at least three days straight so the pesticide could actually go into work number five is i recommend you should grow your herbs in containers they're way more easy to manage, way more easy to control their watering schedule as well as their fertilizing schedule, which is our next point that we'll talk on a little bit later. Growing in containers is way easier for herbs because herbs do not get overly big. So you want to go ahead and keep them a little bit contained in containers, which they're way more manageable, accessible. So you're able to use the containers way easier. In my personal opinion, that's why I'm gonna showcase to you guys two products I have down here. No partnership, it's just I really like these products and I'm gonna showcase them to you guys. Our final point is you want to go ahead and stay on a fertilizing schedule. Herbs for maximum production need some type of nutrition value throughout their growing season, especially if they're grown in containers. So make sure you give them an all-purpose slow-release fertilizer that lasts up to two to three months that you have to apply throughout the during season so they have maximum production and you don't have to worry about any hassle when it comes to them receiving any type of nutritious value from organic matter. You could use organic matter when it comes to herbs like kitchen scraps that would work great for organic matter, but you do wanna stay on a fertilizing schedule. That's what I highly recommend. So now let's actually talk into the planting. So to main gardeners, my herb garden this year is gonna be all started with cuttings. 
my lovely neighbor was able to provide me with multiple cuttings in today's video so that's how i'm going to start it way more affordable and way more easier to do so i'm gonna start with rosemary so rosemary you the thing you could do is that you can start these in water prior to to your project so but i'm gonna start them in the soil so i'm gonna go ahead and clean off the branches right here so we expose all those wounds right there that's where our roots are gonna come out so i'm gonna clean up all my rosemary so i went ahead and i cleaned off all my rosemary already as you can tell this is a rosemary plant but it's struggling so i'm gonna apply some more around it just so we make sure we have rosemary here and i'm gonna be using the bonide rooting hormone right here or rooting powder i also like to use the garden safe i believe is the brand i love that rooting hormone i've always used it so it's uh, super easy how you're gonna do it you're just gonna poke a hole down in here you're gonna get your rosemary cutting dip it into the rooting hormone like so then you're going to go ahead and stick it down in there pat it around with soil and then once you plant all of them you want to give them a good suck of water so let me go ahead and plant my entire herb garden and then we're going to go ahead and talk about growing tips so i planted on my herb garden already and i absolutely love how it came out so here's a few tips on after growing tips so number one is you have to stay on a constant watering schedule at least for the first week you have your plants especially if you start them by cutting like i did you want to water them every day until they develop roots you will know that when they develop roots when you go up to your cutting you tug on them a little bit and you feel a little bit of resistance as well as if you see new growth developing that's when you know you had a successful propagation as well as even if you plant some new plants, I would recommend staying on a constant watering schedule every day for the first week so those roots get established and start growing out into their new home and start developing new branches. Number two is stay vigilant for pests. Especially right now when they're young plants, they're very vulnerable to heavy pests out there. So stay vigilant, check those leaves constantly for any pests that might be hiding underneath all those branches. So make sure you stay vigilant for pests and spray if necessary. And number three, which is the most important out of all, is have some patience. When it comes to herbs, they do take some time to develop and grow a little bit more. So have some patience, just stay on the watering schedule and fertilizing schedule that I told you guys about, and you guys should have a successful herb garden. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Hopefully you guys found something new and informative in this video, because I had absolutely fun filming this video. So thank you all so much for watching this video. May God bless you and your family. And never forget to grow big oats and gardeners. Bye, guys.